This is episode 18 of Distro Delve Season 2, and in this episode we're going to be looking at Makulu Linux Flash, a distro that you've probably never heard of. Distro Delves is a video series where I review Linux distros while following a checklist, which you can view and submit new distros for review on GitHub. Now I'm pretty sure the first time I heard of Makulu Linux was while watching one of English Bob's streams, and it came and went in passing conversation. I saw Makulu Linux recently had a release on DistroWatch, and thought it looked cool, so here we are. And let me tell you, Makulu Linux doesn't just look cool, it's just... So, the installer is a live session where you're greeted with this delightful bear. It would be cool if he was like waving at you or something, but it's probably just a stock image. The installer seems to be a very well-themed Calamares installer. It's very straightforward and nothing is terribly remarkable, it's not a bad thing. What is remarkable though, is after you log in, you're greeted with this monstrous welcome app. Just right out of the gate, pow, it wants to install Steam. Not sure if this is good or bad or just kind of funny. We'll install Steam later on though. Let's just check out the welcome app. So it starts out with some welcome text as well as an ask for donation, which there are quite a few of those and it's not a bad thing, but it, it becomes a little tiring. Next up, we connect to our network, which it opens this super verbose network connections app when the little Wi-Fi applet will do just fine. So, eh. After that, we may as well run an update, and there are a freaking ton of third-party repos installed, so just refreshing the repos, it took forever. And right after the updates, let's check out the driver situation. Now you may have noticed the big conky running on the desktop. The color scheme here isn't great, but notice the driver app that's running. It's mintdrivers.py. So Makulu Linux reuses parts of Ubuntu and Mint both. Interesting. Now the Mint Drivers app looks an awful lot like Ubuntu's driver app, so did they just like fork it and change the name? I don't know, Mint is weird. Anyway, Makulu Linux offers driver version 440.64, so we'll go ahead and install that since it wasn't pre-installed. After updating the drivers, there's an option to set up your firewall and disk snapshots, but after that, there's this cool little theme section. You can change the mouse cursor and the overall color scheme in the Makulu Flash desktop, which, by the way, is just a really well-themed XFCE desktop. And has anyone else noticed that the default mouse cursor is the same mouse cursor from Overwatch? And the last thing we'll look at in the welcome app is the Conky, which Makulu Linux calls a clock. The Conky is actually pretty darn cool, I dig it. So let's finally talk about system resource usage. DF is telling us that Makulu is eating up 9.3 gigabytes for a fresh install. Free is telling us that we're using 870 megabytes of memory at idle. And HTOP shows about 109 tasks with 199 threads. So this desktop is a lot to take in all at once. There are so many apps, I won't be able to cover all of them, but the desktop itself is XFCE with some custom styles and icons. It's clearly designed to look and maybe feel a bit like Windows 7 or even Vista once you turn on the 3D effects. The Makulu tool to set the themes is really simple and cool. Some of the themes had white text on white background, which sucks, but most of them are good. And you know what else this thing has? Compass. Wobbly windows and desktop cubes for days, boys. And there's a funky wallpaper picker, which is... it's funky. But you can just choose your wallpapers through the XFCE applet. Out of all of the Linux distros we've seen here on the series, Makulu Linux has the best assortment of backgrounds. I'll use a few different ones throughout the video to keep things interesting. Now, as I said earlier, Makulu Linux Flash has a ton of apps. It reminds me a lot of Farin OS in that there are GNOME apps and other GTK apps living side by side with apps from other distros and frameworks in here. Lutris is pre-installed, which is a first, but the theme is all kinds of screwed up. Play on Linux is in here, which is a bit silly, and the list goes on. I used different workspaces to fit all of the apps in, which worked really well thanks to Compass's QB desktop effect. There's a Mega Sync app pre-installed, and did anyone notice that the Makulu M looks an awful lot like the Mega M? And despite there being a butt-ton of apps, there aren't many duplicates, like MPV is the media player, for example. There are two different app store things though. There's AppGrid, which we'll look at later on, and then there's the GNOME software equivalent. And the last app I wanna show here is the Builder Constructor, or uh, Compile ISO app, whatever it's called. Basically, it's an app that allows you to build your own flavor of Makula Linux. Kinda weird, but I'm sure there's people out there that love this stuff. So enough about the apps, let's talk about external devices now. EXT FAT is not supported out of the box, which is surprising and probably a bug that'll be fixed in future versions. 
Everything else we look at in the test was supported though. All of the archives, all of the audio formats, and even all of the video formats. Everything here just worked right out of the box. It's always nice to see that. NeoFetch doesn't show the Makulu logo, but it does tell us that this is Makulu Linux Flash Edition with kernel version 5.3 and 2,447 packages installed. It has the older Bash 4.4 along with XFCE and Compiz. The themes are a little interesting. Apparently they are a modified uh, Soul YDX, whatever, theme. And the icon theme is a modified Eva Lever, so not totally original, but that's okay. And the monospace font is the generic monospace font. So third-party app support was uh, ambitious, but ultimately spotty. App images worked great, but flat packs were a little weird. Flathub didn't seem to be configured out of the box, but I was able to install my test flat pack. And even after I added Flathub, the software center didn't show everything from it. Snap support was great though. I installed the OBS Snap, configured it, recorded with it, and played back the video file without a single issue. Since so many apps were installed by default, there wasn't really much left for me to download from the repos as a test. And since the software center is configured with the default repos, and there's a bunch of them, and the Snap Store, you can get pretty much anything with it. So let's just jump over to network sharing. Makulu Linux has this really cool Samba Share app, and does anybody know what this app is exactly? I don't know if it's a custom Makulu app or something, but it freaking worked. After a reboot, I was able to see this share from my Windows laptop. Pretty awesome. Network discovery didn't work though. I wasn't able to find anything on the network without using the IPs for SMB and SSH. Printer support worked great. My printer was detected and configured out of the box. Bluetooth support was not great though. XFCE uses Blue Man to handle Bluetooth devices, which I've never had a good experience with. After struggling to convince Blue Man that it really wanted to connect to my DualShock controller, it connected, but didn't work. Like the DualShock 4 controller has a cool little mouse pad built in, that didn't work. And switching over to Mad Max here, the controller didn't work in the game, even though it was detected, which is odd. Now Mad Max felt a little less smooth than other distros for some reason. The benchmark came back at 27 frames a second, which sounds good, but I don't know. The gameplay just felt off. I wandered around until I found some guys to fight, and I mean the frame rates were okay, I guess. It didn't feel like 30 frames a second, which is what Mango Hut is reporting in the footage. And GTA 5 was unplayable. I mean, look at this. It's so bad. Again, Mango Hut is lying its ass off here. It says I'm getting in the 20s, but this is like 10 frames a second, maybe. And the GTA 5 benchmark returned 13 frames a second, which is higher than most distros we look at, and it's obviously bullshit. And for the record, this is why I like showing gameplay footage in videos. Benchmarks never tell the full story. Now for the Geekbench tests, I compared Makula Linux to Mint 19.3 since Makula reuses some of Mint's tools and they're both based on Ubuntu or Debian. For the CPU stuff, both distros were evenly matched with Mint maybe having a slight edge on the multi-core performance. But for the GPU scores, Mint had a clear lead over Makula in almost every test. So for the outro, I want to show this shmup called Astro Menace. I tried installing it using that app grid thing, but it took forever to install and it wound up just airing out really bad. I tried to install the Flatpak version, but Flatpak didn't upgrade the internal NVIDIA stuff to my driver version, so it didn't work. I was actually surprised at how messy it was getting it running, but I finally got it to work and I cranked the graphics up to full blast. It was a, a little laggy actually, but it's just playable. So I still don't really have much of an opinion on Makulu Linux. It's cool, but it's also really weird. I'm not really sure who it's trying to appeal to or what the overall goal of the project is. The thing that they want to stand out with Makulu Linux Flash specifically is speed. And I mean, is it fast? Sure, I guess, but what does it mean to be fast anyway? I've gone on rants about the idea of fast or quick desktop during live streams in the past, and the TLDR of it is basically what people refer to as a fast Linux distro is actually the responsiveness of the desktop. And how fast the UI responds to user interaction like a button, click, or moving windows around or something has nothing to do with the overall speed of the distro. Makulu Linux Flash is responsive, sure, but look at how bad GTA 5 played. But anyway, Makulu Linux Flash isn't a bad distro by any means, it's just weird. And if you watched this video and you think it looks cool, eh, I suggest you give it a try. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves. If you want to contribute to the series and submit a new distro for review or something, hop on over to the Distro Delves repo and check it out. If you want to support me and the channel, you can become a patron and enjoy posts about behind the scenes stuff, history about the channel, and links to playlists with old and archived videos. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.